Now we're on this section of types of insurance and insurers. This one gets hit pretty hard, so I broke it down into the four major categories. I broke it down for you on the 22 different classes or lines of insurance and the key points for that one. And if you keep going, we broke it down to just the words you want to associate with the various types of insurers so that you can be able to pick them out on the test and it's going to vary and it goes to both of them. They go back and forth. Uh, whether it's property and casualty, personal lines, life, A and H. There's always questions on the various types of insurers and how to associate. Then we broke it down to the government as insurer and I filled in a little section for you where it says let's play because normally when I'm with a group and everything else this is one of the little games that we do for a prize because the state always pops up which are state programs which are federal programs so in general these are the breakdowns that you will see for the test now what happens here is we've also broke down on domicile of insurer and whether it's authorized or unauthorized and remember the key words when they're asking you for well, when they're going for is it domestic, foreign, or alien? What it means here is where was that insurance company incorporated, formed, organized, or located? Those are the things you want to uh, zero in on. Then they're going for domestic, foreign, or alien. If it says transact or doing business in, then they're going to go for is it admitted or non-admitted. And remember, for the test, you always associate non-admitted with surplus lines, brokers. That's how you get it. Even though a California resident could go direct, it's normally purchased through a surplus lines broker that we have referred the client on to. Now, if you'll get a question about a standard and market insurer, if you recall from your studies, we identify insurance companies by whom they market to. So we call a preferred company, not meaning it's any better than a substandard company. It's just called preferred because the clients are going to be below average risk, meaning lower risk. And then we call standard ratings when it comes to your policies. If you're a standard risk or standard for life insurance or standard, it means average acceptance. Well, we associate that one who with the average person. We are, they're marketing towards them. And a substandard insurer, it means that they're marketing to substandard risk, which means higher risk or above average. Now, that means that it's the clientele that's high risk. The companies are very good. So we identify by whom we market to. So on the test, when they're asking you that who offers rates to the insured who is average or slightly better than average, the fact that they've used average twice means they're going for a standard insurer. Now let's take a moment and you go through this test. And once again, same rules apply. You glance at that read it for, uh, or even just stare at it. Then do not look at it again. Then I ask you to answer these questions as you go through and answer. You underline the key words to help you with your decision and then we'll review them. All right, take a moment. All right, hopefully you've done that. And once again, you're not waiting for me to give you the answers because you're really defeating the purpose. You really need to see how you're, if you're doing that, Trust me, just see how well you're going to be doing on your own. Nobody knows your score and you need to start building your confidence for the test and trusting your intuition. So number one says casualty is a class of insurance. The answer is false. Remember casualty is a label for a variety of unrelated types of classes of insurance. So auto, general liability, crime, uh, uh, bonds, those would all be under the, uh, excuse me, the label of casualty. Two, property insurance is a class of insurance. False. The class in California is called fire. That's why up to 2008, your license said fire in casualty license, not property in casualty. So we had to change so that we get uniformity between the states. But the class is still called fire. 
Now, then number three, process when a mutual insurer becomes a stock insurer. Well, that's demutualization. That is going to show up on all your tests. And then number four, an insurer who offers rates to insureds who have an average or better than average loss exposure, remember is a standard market insurer. Now, they have throw things like a premium insurer. There's only three types, meaning, well actually four. There's going to be uh, preferred, standard, substandard, and of course surplus lines insurers. Then what's going to happen here is now we're going to move to your next question, which is insurer that's organized in Nevada would be what type of insurer? Well, if you're not located in Nevada, then that insurer is going to be foreign to your state. If it was organized in your state, that's a domestic insurer. Now, it's hard to think that people from Nevada are foreigners, but if you're ever traveling the Midwest and they ask you where you're from, you say California, they usually say, oh, you're one of those foreigners. So let's go to six. Annuities are not a class of insurance. They come under the class of life insurance. So the class is called life and annuities are just part of it. Now seven, homeowners and commercial property are classes of insurance. False property policies come again under the class of fire. Now eight, an insurer organized in Japan all right, and doing business in your state would be foreign, unauthorized, domestic, or admitted. So underline your correct answer. Well, Japan is alien. Doing business in your state is admitted. Because in the real world, you're both. I mean, you're, where were you organized and are you admitted or non-admitted? So what happens here is you have to see, do they have the word alien or admitted to choose from? So your answer is going to be, um, actually it's going to be admitted because of the fact that alien is not showing up. So doing business makes it an admitted insurer. Now number nine, an insurer organized under the laws of any jurisdiction other than a state of the United States would be considered. Well, the answer is an alien insurer. So underline other than. That's going to be very important in your property and casualty test because they use that phrase a lot to mean except. So organize anywhere except the U.S., that makes them alien. And the last question on this little section is, when a company forms a subsidiary to insure the parent company, this is known as a and your answer should be captive. So key words for captive is subsidiary and parent company. They won't be able to write a test question without using those two words if that's the word that, uh, if they're going after using captive.